Welcome to Friendly Words, the sermon podcast of Pratt Friends Church in Pratt, Kansas. The message you're about to hear was originally preached at Pratt Friends Church on Sunday, January 3rd, 2021. Its focus is on Joseph's obedience to God in a reputation-shattering situation. The message to all who will listen is submission to God in all circumstances is the way of the faithful. Now here is our guest preacher, Tom Harrison. Good morning again. From a different vantage point, I was telling my wife Alana last over the weekend when I was preparing for this message, this reminded me of my early days in radio broadcasting overseas in a little studio in Spain, and we recorded so many of the programs, and I had to learn how to record programs ahead of time and trying to think of who I might be sharing that program with. Now, in the early days, I shared them with my wife, so it was easily for, easy for me to visualize her sitting there in the house listening to it. However, there were times when I'd come home after I'd done an especially good program, and she'd listen to it, and I'd come home and said, how do you think I did? Oh, I didn't hear it. So there may be that this, this morning, too. There may be those of you that are listening and watching right now, and later on this week, you'll catch a hold of this. So I hope this message is for all of us. Matthew 1 is the chapter that I'm pulling the message from this morning. Mike contacted me about 10 days ago and said he was going to start teaching through Matthew and wondered if I wanted to take the first chapter. Well, I'll take a little segment of it. I got to thinking about Joseph, the father of Jesus, however, not the father of Jesus. I got to thinking about his obedience. Greg Garrison asked me this morning if I had a title. Do you have a title, if anything, for this sermon? He knows me so well. I said, well, the title I have is I Choose, I choose God. Who do you choose? I use it in relationship to the obedience of Joseph. Joseph made a decision to be married to Mary, the mother of Jesus. What did it cost him, and what did what did that decision do for our history? I was going to read all of Matthew chapter 1, but I'm just going to call to your attention that the first few verses of this are all the genealogy of Jesus. That's important from a standpoint of understanding in human terms where he came from. I'm going to slip on down through the passage to the basic passages we're going to deal with. And, and the interesting thing is all of those generations covered 14 generations and then 14 generations then another 14 generations and then down and Jacob the father of Joseph the husband of Mary and Mary who was the mother of Jesus who is called the Messiah thus there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David 14 from David to the exile to Babylon and 14 from the exile to the Messiah now to the meat of this passage for me, Joseph's decision and its impact on Mary, on the community where they lived, and on our lives these many years later. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. So here's a few thoughts on that decision that Joseph made. One thought is, it was incredible that the name that was given to him through the Holy Spirit is the name that he chose to name Jesus. That was incredible because that just didn't happen then in that era. Joseph also had the legal right to divorce Mary quietly and walk away from the commitment that he had made to wed Mary. After all, the child she was carrying was not his. 
And the story that Mary gave him was more than a little funny. It was strange. It was preposterous. It was outlandish. He probably, his first, his first uh, answer to Mary when she said that to him was probably something like, say what? That story about how Mary came to be pregnant would not go over very well with Joseph's buddies and probably not with his family as well. This decision of keeping his commitment to Mary, to marry her, most likely did not make common sense to Joseph. Joseph's plans to continue as a carpenter, this could probably affect his business. In the village, it would most likely affect the success of that business. There would be questions from those who heard the story of Jesus even after the life of Jesus was ended on earth. He was thinking not only of what was going to happen right now, but he had to be thinking of what's going to happen in the future. Now, Joseph did not have the ability to look in the future to see how keeping his commitment to Mary would pan out. We have the ability to look back through Scripture, backwards through Scripture, and to understand that those things that were said to people like Joseph did come to pass later on. But lots of times when we're given a task to do, we don't know what, how that's going to turn out. My wife and I are in the process of, of a buying a home. We don't know how that's going to turn out yet, and every day there seems like there's something else happening. Later on, we'll be able to look back and see how God provided, but right now it's kind of walking on thin ice. We have the ability to look back on history and see how Joseph's decision gave us a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Jesus was, um, Joseph was making a lifetime decision based upon the word of a young woman. We think that Mary was most likely, likely 14 or 15 years old at the time of, the impending, of her impending marriage to Joseph. Joseph would have to live with the lies that we would be told about him. He and Mary lived in a small village, and you know how a small village is. Some of us live in small towns. We know how that is. Joseph would have to live with his decision forever. Now, forever seems a long time, and Joseph would die, but his ancestors would have to live with that decision. On the other hand, Joseph did, did have the visit from the angel. However, I might wonder how a carpenter who builds furniture and knows that you have to measure twice and cut once with no margin for error might be more than a little amazed by a visit from an angel. I know that some of the dreams that I have don't seem to make sense. I'm sure there's dreams you have that don't make sense either. And the reading from Matthew indicates that Joseph was visited in a dream. Here is the account of the dream from a different perspective, from the message translation. The birth of Jesus, verses 18 and 19. The birth of Jesus took place like this. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. Before they came to the marriage bed, Joseph discovered she was pregnant. It was by the Holy Spirit, but he didn't know that. Joseph, chagrined but noble, determined to take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. Here's the important verse. While he was trying to figure a way out, he had a dream. Have you, ever had been, have you ever been given a task by the Lord to do, or even a task by someone else to do, and you've been trying to figure out a way not to do it? But have you ever had a dream that went with it? I've had a few, but nothing like this, I don't think. God's angel spoke in the dream. He said, Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. Mary's pregnancy is spirit-conceived. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. She will bring a son to birth, and when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus, which means God saves, because he will save his people from their sins. This would bring the prophet's embryonic sermon to full term. Watch for this. A virgin will get pregnant and bear a son. They will name him Emmanuel, Hebrew for God is with us. Then Joseph woke up. He did exactly what God's angel commanded him in the dream. He married Mary, but he did not consummate the marriage until she had the baby. He named the baby Jesus. So we are here at this point in time trying to figure out how to take care of tomorrow, much like Joseph was doing when Mary shared the news that she was pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Words from an angel that matched the telling, the telling of the story from Mary. We're trying to figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. We're grateful that Joseph made that decision to go ahead <clears throat> and become Mary's husband and to take Jesus and raise him as his own. We're grateful, but sometimes you and I still wonder, even at the leading from God's Holy Spirit in our own lives. 
You and I are capable to, of asking God for direction in our own lives and following that direction even when we wonder. The true story of the birth and death and resurrection of Jesus gives us the honor and empowerment to make those life-changing decisions in our own lives. Once again, I want to share the words from Psalm 19, this time the complete psalm from the message translation, which gives it a little different look. God's glory is on tour in the skies. God craft on exhibit across the horizon. Madam Day holds classes every morning. Professor Knight lectures each evening. Their words aren't heard, their voices aren't recorded, but their silence fills the earth. Unspoken truth is spoken everywhere. God makes a huge dome for the sun, a super dome. The morning sun's a new husband leaping from his honeymoon bed. The daybreaking sun, an athlete racing to the tape. That's how God's word vaults across the skies. From sunrise to sunset, melting ice, scorching deserts, warming hearts to faith. The revelation of God is whole and pulls our lives together. The signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. The life maps of God are right, showing the way to joy. The directions of God are plain and easy on the eyes. God's reputation is 24 karat gold with a lifetime guarantee. The decisions of God are accurate down to the nth degree. God's word is better than a diamond, better than a diamond set between emeralds. You'll like it better than strawberries in spring, better than red ripe strawberries. There's more. God's word warns us of danger and directs us to his hidden treasure. Otherwise, how will we find our way or know when we play the fool? Clean the slate, God, so we can start the day fresh. Keep me from stupid sins, from thinking I can take over your work. Then I can start this day sun-washed, scrubbed clean of the grime of sin. These are the words in my mouth. These are what I chew on and pray. Accept them when I place them on the morning altar. O God, my altar rock. God, priest of my altar. So let's pray. God, in the midst of all that has gone on in the last few months, we come to you this morning. Just a few of us gathered here and those gathered together with us through the wonder of the online community. We have chosen to be in this place and in this service by faith and on purpose. We ask for your blessing on our shared time together. Hear our cries for comfort and peace and calm. Guide and direct our words as we have been singing your songs to you. Guide our thoughts to hear your words. Be in our hearts as we complete a time of celebration. We have celebrated the gift of your son and we have lamented because of the many celebrations that we're, we were not able to attend. Please give us our daily bread and give each of us exactly what we need when we need it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I choose God. Who do you choose? Joseph chose God's ways. If he hadn't have chosen God's ways, we wouldn't have a savior. Sometimes those types of decisions are given to us to make in our lives that may not have millennial com uh, complications, but they may have lifetime complications with our brothers and our sisters and our children. Think of our, the results of our decisions on our children and our children's children and our children's children's children. God bless you. Thank you for being with us on this first day of this first Sunday. Amen. We hope you have been encouraged and challenged by today's sermon. If you want to hear each week's message, be sure to subscribe to Friendly Words in your podcast app. May God bless you as you follow Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit.